By now, we're comfortable with many different vector spaces, but of course, we spent a considerable amount of time studying Rn, Euclidean n space. But today, we're going to introduce something called an isomorphism and isomorphic vector spaces. Vector spaces that are isomorphic have exactly the same algebraic structure, and so all the time we spent studying Rn, it's actually going to turn out to be a lot more widely applicable than you would expect. Indeed, we'll prove a pretty surprising theorem that if two vector spaces are finite dimensional and have the same dimension, then in fact they are isomorphic. That is, they have the same algebraic structure, just from knowing they have the same dimensions. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, let's begin with the definition. A linear transformation t from a vector space v to a vector space w that is both one-to-one -one and onto is said to be an isomorphism, and we say that v is isomorphic to w. As a quick recap, it's one-to-one -one if it preserves distinctness, so it maps distinct vectors to distinct vectors, and for t to be onto means that every vector in w is getting mapped to by at least one vector in v. Now in the definition, we say that v is isomorphic to w because t is an isomorphism from v to w. But indeed, the inverse transformation, which goes the other direction, from w to v, will also be an isomorphism. And so we may simply say that the vector spaces v and w are isomorphic, without indicating any direction to that relationship. Isomorphism is a funny word, but it's important you remember what it means, and we see that in the etymology of the word. It derives from two Greek words, iso, meaning same, and morphosis, meaning form or shape. So like we said earlier, the vector spaces being isomorphic means that they have the same form or shape, or more specifically in this context, the same algebraic structure. Here's an easy example of two vector spaces where it should be quite clear they do have the same structure. They are isomorphic. That's r cubed and the vector space of one by three row matrices. Every vector from r cubed is just an order triple, and every vector from the vector space of one by three matrices is just a row matrix with three entries. It's pretty clear that the only difference here is the notation. One uses parentheses, one uses brackets. Indeed, the algebraic structures at play here are exactly the same. Multiplying a vector in R cubed by a scalar C just has the effect of distributing the scalar through the components. In the same way that multiplying a vector in this vector space by a scalar C just has the effect of distributing the scalar through the components of the matrix. Similarly, the addition of two vectors in R cubed is just done component-wise, and the addition of two vectors from M13 is also done component-wise. That is to say, corresponding entries are added together. So these two vector spaces are isomorphic, and the transformation shown here, as well as its inverse, are isomorphisms from one vector space to the other. The isomorphism T takes an ordered triple XYZ and sends it to the row matrix with three entries, X, Y, and Z. This is just one little example of R cubed being a perfect model for some other three-dimensional vector space, but the next theorem we'll prove will establish that Rn is actually a perfect model for every n-dimensional vector space. The theorem, again, states that if two finite-dimensional vector spaces have the same dimension, then they'll be isomorphic, and the converse is true as well. Here's the statement of the theorem. Two finite dimensional vector spaces, V and W, are isomorphic if and only if they have the same dimension. So if some vector space has n dimensions, it would be isomorphic to Rn. Let's go ahead and prove it. We'll begin by assuming that V and W are isomorphic and show that forces them to have the same dimension. This proof relies on some prior results about rank and nullity of linear transformations. I'll leave links in the description to my videos on those topics if you need to review. Again, we're gonna assume that V is isomorphic to W and we're allowed 
allowed to assume that they're both finite dimensional vector spaces. So let's say that V is N dimensional. Then it's our goal to show that W, the isomorphic space, is also N dimensional. They have to have the same dimension. Okay, well, if we know the vector spaces are isomorphic, then we know that an isomorphism between them exists. So there exists an isomorphism T from V to W. Since T is an isomorphism, we know that it's a linear transformation, it's one-to-one, -one, and it's onto, and all of these things are important. Since T is one-to-one, -one, well, we've previously proven that's equivalent to a linear transformation having a kernel of the zero space. So T being one-to-one -one means that its kernel is a zero space, which means the dimension of its kernel is equal to zero. And remember, we call the dimension of the kernel the nullity of the linear transformation. Then we can apply the dimension theorem for linear transformations, which says that the nullity plus the rank must equal the dimension of the domain. In this case, like we just said, the nullity, the dimension of the kernel, is zero. And so it must just be the rank that equals the dimension of the domain. The rank of the linear transformation has to equal the dimension of V. And of course, we know the dimension of V is N. Now recall, by definition, the rank of the transformation is the dimension of its range. So if the rank of T is equal to the dimension of V, which is N, then the dimension of the range of T also is equal to n. And that basically gets us there because remember this transformation is onto because it's an isomorphism. Since it's onto, that means its range equals the codomain, w. Hence, the dimension of the range is obviously the dimension of w because the range and w are exactly the same. Hence, since the dimension of the range is equal to n, so too is the dimension of w. So assuming that v and w were isomorphic, forced them to have the same dimension, under the additional assumption, of course, that they're both finite dimensional. This should be no surprise, since isomorphic vector spaces have the same structure, they certainly have to have the same dimension, and this proof establishes that. All right, let's go the other direction now, assuming that v and w are finite dimensional vector spaces of the same dimension and show that they're isomorphic. So we're going to assume that V and W are n-dimensional vector spaces. Let's say that BV is a basis of the vector space V and BW is a basis for the vector space W. Note that they both have n vectors because we're assuming that these vector spaces are n-dimensional. Now if this is a basis for the vector space V, then an arbitrary vector from V can be represented as a linear combination of those basis vectors. So here is an arbitrary vector in V. Again, it's just a linear combination of those basis vectors. So then to show that these vector spaces are isomorphic, we need to show that there exists some function between them, which is an isomorphism. So let's go ahead and define that function. Here it is. We're going to call it T. It goes from V to W, and here's how it works. It takes an arbitrary vector from V, which is a linear combination of the basis vectors, and it sends it to the exact same linear combination of the basis vectors of W. So all of those coefficients are exactly the same, it's just the basis vectors that have changed. Now we're claiming here that this is a linear transformation, of course we have to prove that. So we have to prove that it satisfies the additivity property, the homogeneity property, and then we need to prove that it's an isomorphism, which means we need to prove that it's one-to-one -one and that it's onto. Thankfully, these are all pretty straightforward, but it is a lot to do. Here are the proofs of those four properties we need to prove. These two establish linearity, and these two establish that it is indeed an isomorphism. I'll zoom into each one and quickly walk you through them. So here for additivity, we're taking two arbitrary vectors from the domain V, and we're putting their sum into our transformation T. And we should be able to split this transformation across that sum. So the first thing we do is combine like terms. C1V1 and D1V1, for example, we can add those together to C1 1 plus d1, v1. Then we apply the definition of the transformation. What the transformation does is it takes a linear combination of the basis vectors in v and sends it to the same linear combination of the basis vectors in w. 
Then we split up the like terms so that we have C1W1 plus C2W2 and so on, and separately we have D1W1 plus D2W2 and so on. And then we can again apply the definition of the linear transformation. This is the image of this, and this is the image of this. Said once more, this linear combination of basis vectors in W is the image of this linear combination of basis vectors in V, and similarly over here. And so you can see that we were able to split this up so that the transformation has been split across that sum. So indeed, this transformation satisfies the additivity property. For homogeneity, we take an arbitrary scalar multiple of an arbitrary vector from the domain and put it into our transformation. Then we distribute the scalar through the linear combination, and then we apply the definition of the transformation. It maps this linear combination of basis vectors in V to the same linear combination of basis vectors in W. Every one of these still has that scalar K, so then we're going to factor that out, and then once more apply the definition of the transformation. This linear combination of basis vectors in W is the image of this corresponding linear combination of basis vectors in V, and so you see we're able to pull the scalar out of the transformation, and so it satisfies the homogeneity property. So we know that the transformation is linear. Let's prove that it's an isomorphism now by proving it's one-to-one -one and it's onto. To be one-to-one -one means that it maps distinct vectors in V to distinct vectors in W. So let's say we have these two distinct vectors from the domain V. If they're distinct, they must differ in at least one coefficient, and by definition of the transformation, which preserves those coefficients, their images will also have to differ in all of the same coefficients. So if this vector and this one, for example, if they differ in that second coefficient, then their images in W will also have to differ in that second coefficient, because the coefficients don't change when we put the vectors through the transformation. It's just the basis vectors that are being combined which are changed. So indeed, distinct vectors are mapped to distinct vectors. This transformation is one-to-one. -to, -one. to prove that it's onto, we have to take an arbitrary vector from the codomain, so that's an arbitrary vector from W, and show that there's some vector in the domain which maps to it. Indeed there is, of course, this is a linear combination of basis vectors in W, so that same linear combination of the basis vectors in V will map to this vector in W under the transformation T. And so indeed it is onto, hence in total it's an isomorphism from V to W. So that establishes if V and W have the same finite dimension, they must be isomorphic vector spaces. And so indeed if two vector spaces are finite dimensional, they will have the same dimension if and only if they're isomorphic. Of course, this means that every n-dimensional vector space is isomorphic to Rn. Rn is a perfect model for every n-dimensional vector space, which is pretty impressive. It's a very powerful model. Here's a theorem which gives us the isomorphism from an n-dimensional space to Rn. If S is an ordered basis for an n-dimensional vector space V, then the coordinate map which takes an arbitrary vector from the vector space and maps it to its coordinate vector relative to the basis S, that's an isomorphism between V and Rn. Remember, the coordinate vector would have n coordinates. It would exist in Rn. And in fact, because the basis is ordered, this isn't describing just one isomorphism from V to Rn, but in fact n factorial isomorphisms. We would get an isomorphism for every possible ordering of S, V ordered basis. And of course, if V is n-dimensional, then its basis has n vectors, and hence n factorial ways it could be ordered. Let's finish by looking at a few natural isomorphisms. These are the obvious isomorphisms between the standard bases for vector spaces. The natural isomorphism from the vector space of polynomials up to degree n minus 1 to Euclidean n space is defined like this. So it takes a polynomial from the domain space and it maps it to what we would call its coordinate vector. It just takes the coefficients of the terms in the polynomial, puts those in an n-tuple, and that exists in Rn. 
and this transformation is an isomorphism between the spaces. In this manner, we see that the x's present in the polynomial space are unimportant as far as the algebraic structure is concerned, because multiplying them by scalars and adding them together behaves exactly like these ordered n-tuples in Rn. These x's are not doing anything. It's just like an alternative way of denoting the term's position in an n-tuple. Two more simple examples, the natural isomorphism from the vector space of two by two matrices to R4 is defined like this. The transformation just takes this two by two matrix and maps it to the ordered four tuple, which just consists of its individual entries running along the rows, A, B, C, D. Again, because the vector spaces are isomorphic, the difference between them is really just notational, how we choose to organize these four components. And the more general example, the isomorphism from the vector space of M by N matrices to R, M, N, is defined like this. Again, it just runs along the rows of the matrix. That's how we construct the N tuple. So A11, A12, and we would go on and on and on, finally ending at A, M, N minus one, and then finally A, M, N. So the isomorphism lists the components of the matrix like that, going along the rows. So that's what an isomorphism between vector spaces is, and a very important theorem concerning isomorphic vector spaces. Once more, that theorem said that two finite dimensional vector spaces, V and W, will be isomorphic if and only if they have the same dimension. A consequence of that is that any n-dimensional vector space is isomorphic to Rn. And again, what it means for two vector spaces to be isomorphic is that there's this linear transformation between them, which is both one-to-one -one and onto. You can think of an isomorphic vector space W, if it's isomorphic to V, you can think of it as just a relabeling, a change notation of the vector space V because if they're isomorphic, their algebraic structures are exactly the same. Now, I am saying algebraic here, but what about geometric structure? That exists in inner product spaces, and next time we'll take a look at isomorphisms on inner product spaces. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists for more. And if you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Thanks for watching.